recording in progress. Too many people here today. Muting it. What do you think, Angel? Are you ready? <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> she can't help it. I'm just gonna do oh, early first. Overseas. I don't know whose the bowl this is. It's not yours, is it? Uh, I'm going to use it. <laughs> yeah. It's in there. What do you, what kind of wand do you use? With a ball at the end, or mm -hmm. like the suede, suede. Yeah, that's what that one is. I like the balls at the end for the crystal person. Yeah. yeah. You like that sound of the. All right, my friends, welcome. Not very many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My seven yogis, thank you for being here. This is my fave class, so good job being at my fave class. Um, but I say that sometimes for other classes too, I will admit. But out of Tuesday and Thursday, I like deep power. All right. Um, let's see, special announcements, what we got coming. I am teaching next Wednesday night at the Capitol. So if you guys have been to that class, it's freaking huge. There's like 500 people. It's kind of crazy, but uh, uh, it's free. And next Wednesday, 7 p.m., I'm teaching with James. Uh, many of you know James Hardy, who also teaches here. So we're co-teaching a class. Um, Ruby will be there. Hopefully she won't get kicked out. My husband will be there taking care of if so. But anyway, so next Wednesday, there's that. It's free. And then next Saturday, so not this Saturday, next Saturday, I have my embodiment class, which is a once per month offering I do. It's yoga, uh, breath work, and sound. So it's about one and a half to two hours, somewhere in there. And we do yoga the first little bit. It's a little bit different than my regular classes, like a little less... Uh, prescribed movement and a little more invitation to just be more free, more intuitive. And then breath work, which is one breath the entire time type you did with me, right? Did you have to leave early or did you stay? No. Okay, cool. Yeah. So one breath the entire time brings you down into your body. So you can kind of like process all the stuff, express all the emotions that need to come out. And then at the end, when you're all like, cleared out, vibrating, connected, then that's when I do the sound and everything. And it's just real nice. Like, so <laughs> I would love to have you if you're around next weekend. Anybody else have announcements that you want to say? Okay. Then let's just practice friends. So <laughs> let's start on our backs. So lay down. And as you lay down, Take a moment to just kind of feel your body a little more. So maybe it's a big full body stretch, arms long, legs long. Maybe you take your arms out wide, your legs out wide like a starfish and just take up space for a moment. Maybe you hug your knees in and just kind of rock side to side, give your low back a little massage. So anything you want, anything to just feel your own body, your physicality a little bit more. And then eventually land in what's called constructive rest pose. So no hurry, but eventually just feet on the ground with knees bent, 
feet nice and wide. So about mat width distance apart. And then let your knees fall in either to touch or they don't have to touch if they don't naturally touch. Just let them fall in towards each other. And then invitation to bring one hand to your heart space and one hand to your low belly. Close your eyes. Or if you want to keep your eyes open, soften and lower your gaze. Really allow yourself to arrive here in this space. So feel fully, feel your body, the weight of your body on the ground, the air on your skin. Maybe it feels really nice, or maybe you even feel a little chilly. So noticing just temperature, texture. And then inside, inside your inner space, not literally, not bones, tendons, ligaments, muscles, but just more energetically, what's there? What's flowing around inside? What emotions might be present? What impulses might be coming and going? What thoughts might be coming and going? So just noticing everything that is in this moment right now, flowing through. You just become the awareness, the witness behind it all. And start to notice your breath. Start to feel into it or maybe even visualize it. Use your imagination. The next time you breathe in, very intentionally, fill up as big as you possibly can. And then when you think you're full, hold there. See if you can even take an extra little sip. Big sigh out your mouth when you're ready. Let it go. Good job. Do that two more times. Inhale. Fill up. Hold in fullness. Take an extra sip, maybe even two extra sips. And when you're ready, out your mouth. Let it go. Very nice. Last time. So biggest inhale. You've taken all morning. Hold. As you hold your breath, see if there's any way you can soften around it a little bit. Extra sip or two. And when you're ready, let it go. Sigh it out. Um, nice job. Lips sealed now. Begin to drop into what we call ujjayi breath. So ujjayi is in and out through your nose by way of the back of your throat. You start to create a little whisper noise as you breathe in and out. And you're using the same muscles you use when you whisper or when you hum. So you might even think of this as humming on the inside. Start to feel into your own internal vibration. And as you breathe deep, in this position, see if you can feel your breath, especially move all the way down into your low back, low belly, even your pelvic bowl. All the way to empty with every exhale. So please feel free, my friends, to stay here longer or even come back here at any time during our practice today if you just need a moment to rest and connect and ground. If you're ready to start moving, Take your ujjayi breath with you and draw your knees towards your belly. Find a little rock from side to side. And then after a few rocks, extend your legs straight up towards the sky, towards the ceiling. Tee out your arms. Palms can face up or down, whatever feels best to you. So make your legs as straight as you can, but bend your knees as much as needed so that it doesn't pull on your low back and you still have a neutral spine. Activate your feet, flex point or floint, and hug your legs together like you're trying to create a big mermaid tail. Take one more inhale here. And as you exhale, keep your legs the same, but just ever so slowly move them over to the right side and hover them above the ground. So it's like you're going into a twist but you're not relaxing, you're hovering and holding. Breathe in as you hold, squeeze your legs together. Try to keep backs of your shoulders rooted. Exhale ever so slowly, come back to center. Inhale, center, feel into your neutral spine, active feet. 
Adjust your legs if needed and exhale over to your left side. If this feels like too much, bend your knees and that'll help. So the straighter your legs, the heavier it's gonna feel. Hold as you inhale, squeeze your legs. Some of your shoulders are rooted and exhale back to center ever so slowly. We'll go just one more time each direction. So inhale center and exhale to your right side. Hold as you inhale, hug your legs towards midline, activate your feet, soften your face, exhale center, lift back up. Good job. Inhale, make any adjustments needed as you hold and then exhale to the left. Active feet, squeeze towards midline with your legs. Inhale, hold, and back to center with your exhalation. Once you're back at center, hold there and take your arms up towards the sky as well. So see if you can keep your belly button drawing down. And next time you inhale, reach up towards your toes like you're trying to touch them. So lift your upper body, draw your belly button down towards the ground. Stay here or see if you can tuck your tailbone and lift your toes even higher. Reach your fingertips higher. Pull low belly down. Soften your face. Hold here. Squeeze your legs together. Three, two, one. Let it all go. Full body stretch. So take your arms long. Take your legs long. You can make this more active. So actively reach with fingers and toes, or you can make it more passive. Just kind of relax with your arms overhead, legs extended forward. Maybe even gently give your legs a little shake out. And feel the new awareness you might have now in your core, in your center, in your abdominals. Draw your knees back towards your belly. Start with a gentle rock from side to side. But then eventually we'll start to rock forward and back, coming onto hands and knees. So if you'd rather get there your own way, please feel free. Otherwise, eventually start rocking and rolling after a few rocks. So feel free to take your time, have fun with these, maybe even find a little bit of hover time on your upper back or on your sit bones. But eventually you will come into tabletop position. So cross your ankles and just roll over your feet. We'll probably crawl backwards a little bit to get centered on your mat again. Once you're in tabletop position, any way your body wants to explore, move. So cat cows, hip circles, child's pose. Might feel really nice to come forward towards a cobra or almost an up dog position. So after that abdominal work, stretch your abdominal wall, find space and length there. Feel around and make sure that your breath, ujjayi breath, is still there. You haven't lost it. And if you have, just fire it back up, bring it back. Good job, friends. Take about three to five more rounds, just exploring in this way on your own. And then eventually find your way back to downward facing dog. No rush. Beautiful. Amazing movement, you guys. Back in your down dog. Do very much the same thing. Feel into it. Explore. So that might just mean... You're completely still on the outside, but inside you're feeling all those little micro movements, all those little micro adjustments. Sometimes it's those little micro adjustments that actually make the biggest difference. Maybe on the outside, you're moving a lot. Maybe you're reaching one leg up and then the other leg. Maybe you're pedaling out your heels or nodding your head. So in down dog, try to find a connection to your center to lift you out of your hands. So your hands are your foundation in this posture. They're supposed to be your foundation. So you want strong hands against the ground, but then use the strength in your core to lift you up. So rather than feeling like energy is moving down into your hands, feel like it's coming up from your hands lengthen your spine your side bodies and connect to your center maybe you bend your knees a lot and that's totally fine for this pose you do not need to get your legs straight or your heels to the ground ever 
So only if it feels like you're getting some sort of benefit out of that. Take one more big inhale into your down dog, friends. And as you exhale, look forward to the top of your space and however you want to get there, forward fold. Once you have arrived, let's come straight into our halfway lift. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bow, let it go. One more like that. Inhale, halfway lift. Top of your head reaches forward, back of your neck is long. Exhale, release. And this time all the way up. So come through your halfway lift and keep rising arms to the sky as you inhale. And Sahar, exhale. Beautiful. Flow with your breath for a moment. High mountain, breathe in. Slow dive all the way down. So hinge at your hips, lengthen your spine, then fold. Very nice. Inhale, lift halfway. Back of your neck is long. Stick your butt way out. Press back through the tops of your thighs. Nice, Chris. Exhale, fold. And then press into your feet. Connect to your center. Lead with your heart. So straight spine all the way up. Arms reach. Inhale. Hands to heart center. Exhale. So beautiful, everybody. We'll add on just a little bit. Inhale, arms to the sky. And as you exhale, baby back bend, cactus your arms, squeeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Hug in with your inner thighs as you press your hips gently forward. Inhale, neutral. So re extend, realign. Reach up, stick your butt out, hinge at your hips. Exhale all the way down. Weight is forward in your feet as you dive down. Forward fold. Breathe in and lift halfway. Ardha Uttanasana. Nice, Tara. Exhale. Plant your hands. Step your feet to the back of your yoga mat. Plank position. All right. Pause in your plank pose. Spread your fingers wide and push the ground away. Take an inhale here. And then as you exhale, simply lift your hips and press them back. Down dogs. So you might bend your knees a lot. Lengthen. Inhale. Come forward. Rock forward. High plank. Ideally, you don't have to move hands or feet. Exhale, lift your hips, press them back, down dog. Feel your center. This time we're adding a push-up. Inhale, come forward, high plank. If you want to come to your knees, feel free. Exhale, lower halfway. Strong arms, strong belly. Inhale, push up, straighten your arms. <laughs> Exhale, downward facing dog. Very nice. One more time. You got this. Inhale, forward, high plank. Knees can come down if you want. Exhale, lower halfway. Don't let your shoulders roll forward. Don't let your hips sink. Inhale, push up. Exhale, down dog. Take it back. Very nice, everybody. Take a moment and just walk out your dog. And then widen your feet. So feet nice and wide to the width of your mat. Walk your hands back to your feet. So you'll be in a slightly wide-legged forward fold at the back of your yoga mat. Inhale, halfway lift position. And then invitation to either, so we're going into a twist, either right hand comes down, you can bend your right knee a lot, left arm up, or right hand to the outside of left ankle, left arm might wrap behind you. If it feels good to work your right leg towards straight, go for it. But if a bend in your right knee feels better, that's totally fine. So lots of length in the back of your left leg, maybe both legs, and gently work your twist. Use your breath wherever you're at. Nice, Wendy. Take one more round. So all the way to empty as you exhale, and then slowly unwind and switch to the other side. So perhaps left hand on the ground, right arm to the sky, or left hand outside of right ankle, right arm wraps behind. Big, deep breaths. Work your left leg towards straight if it feels right. If not, bend in the left knee, totally fine. Keep reaching your butt back, both butt cheeks, sit bones. Soft through your face, last round here. Good breathing all the way to empty and then let it go. Keep your feet wide, halfway lift, inhale. Plant your hands or your fingertips and walk your hands forward. So you're coming into a plank with your feet at the width of your mat, really wide with your feet. 
No, it feels a little funky. Pause in your plank pose. See if you can hover your right foot above the ground. Nothing else changes. If this feels like enough, stay right here. If you want a little more, see if you can lift your left arm, reach it forward. Teeter-totter pose. Breathe. Strong core. One more breath. And then back down, plank with wide feet. Try the other side. Left foot hovers. It doesn't have to lift high. Stay here or right arm forward. Teeter-totter. Strong and powerful through your center. Take one more breath. Regular plank pose. Walk your feet in if you would like to. Inhale, push the ground away. Exhale all the way to your belly. Ah, Spider-Man Cobra. Hands come out wide onto the hardwood floor on your fingertips. Inhale, lift. As you exhale, dip your left shoulder down and gaze right. Inhale back to center. Little tone in your belly. Draw your belly button in and up. Press your pelvis and shoelaces. Exhale, other side, twist. Beautiful. Inhale back to center. Take that one more time each direction. Move at your own pace with your own breath. Nice job. Good, Samantha. Inhale, eventually we'll bring you back to center. You can hold there as long as you want if it feels good. And then downward facing dog. Nice trace. So as you take it back to down dog, slow, spacious, ujjayi breath, fire it up. My shoulders, Wendy. Take a great big inhale, push the ground away. Exhale, gaze to the top of your space, step or float forward, fold, top of your yoga mat. Inhale to a halfway lift position, lengthen. Nice, Kristen. Exhale, fold. Good, Callie. And all the way up, rise. Arms to the sky as you breathe in. And exhale, hands to heart. All right, inhale, take your arms up. And we're going to pause right here and balance. So right foot is your foundation. Lift your left knee up, standing stop. So hug in with your inner thighs, flex your left toes, focus your gaze. Find something to look at in front of you, on the ground, on the wall. And then that's not moving, ideally. Nice job. Take one more inhale, standing stop. And then as you exhale, any variation of warrior three, so ever so slowly start to extend your left leg back. You can reach your arms forward. You can reach your arms out. You can reach your arms back, whatever works best for you. Maybe you bring your hands to your heart or even to blocks. So pause in warrior three for about two, maybe even three breaths. Feel the length in your spine. Feel the strength in your back leg. Yes, amazing, you guys. See if you can land in a crescent lunge. Left toes back, beautiful arms reach up. Take a moment to settle in, make any adjustments needed. Find strength in your legs, stability in your legs by hugging towards midline. So front hip pulls back, back hip pulls forward. We're plugging the femur bones into the hip sockets. And then from our strong foundation, you can grow into your expression. Yes, you guys look amazing. So feel your heart lift, feel your fingers spread, or maybe you want to soften your fingers today, but whatever you're doing, you're feeling it. It's intentional. Take one more inhale, crescent lunge. Nice poses. As you exhale, friends, we're going to twist left arm forward, right arm back. So stay in your lunge. Invitation to bend your back knee a little or a lot. So it might be hovering right above the ground, super strong through your legs. Take one more full round here. And then bottom of your exhale, bring your right forearm across your low back, square your shoulders forward, and then see if you can start to create a back bend. Reach up, reach back. I know your legs are feeling it. Breathe down into them. Puff up your chest. Take one more inhale. Exhale, left hand comes down. Bring your right hand down. Bring both hands over to the left long edge of your mat. Parallel your feet. Straighten out your legs. Halfway lift position, bring your hands to your hips. So strong legs, strong core, hands to hips. And then all the way up, rise. Pivot your heels in, point your toes out. 
and then bend your knees. So we're in a high squat. Most people call this goddess pose. So knees right over your ankles. If you need to adjust, adjust. Bring your hands to your thighs. And for a second, just kind of rock side to side. If you don't want your hands on your thighs, that was totally fine. You can reach your arms out. That'll bring more strength into your legs. So you choose. And then eventually hands will come to your thighs and find stillness in your legs. Find a standing cow pose. So stick your butt out behind you and reach your heart forward. Press your knees open wide as you exhale, twist to the back of the room. Dip your right shoulder down. Yes, hold for a full round of breath. Stay low in your legs. Inhale through center. Good job. Exhale, twist forward. Beautiful, full round of breath, hold. Press your knees nice and wide. Inhale, center. One more time each direction, a little bit faster. Exhale to the back, all the way to emptiness. Inhale, center, stay low. Good job, exhale to the front. Inhale, center. Now, straighten your legs. Take your arms up. We're gonna come into a warrior two, so back. Foot parallel to the back of your mat. Front foot faces forward. And then adjust your legs and your arms as needed. So yeah, bend your front knee. Reach forward and back. Beautiful. If you don't like where your feet are, feel free to just look down at your feet and adjust however you want. So if it didn't work like a beautiful transition, graceful transition, who cares? Do what you got to do to find your most efficient way of being in this posture. You guys look so nice. Beautiful work. Next time you inhale, reverse your warrior. So front palm rotates up, reach up, reach back. Lots of length in your right side. Left hand might come to your left hip. Left arm could reach behind you and forward. You could grab your right wrist. Left hand could slide down your back leg. Lots of options. Number one focus is that length in your right side. Puff up through your right rib cage. Breathe into that space. Nice job, everybody. Beautiful poses. Bend your front knee and drag it towards your pinky toe. One last inhale. As you exhale, side angle posture. So come through your warrior two, reach forward, and then tip it over, side angle pose. So right elbow to right thigh or right hand to the ground or a block. Left arm up or left arm might reach forward. And if you feel like staying here today, please feel free to stay right here. Otherwise, half moon. So reach forward with your right hand. You can take a block with you. And left leg floats up. Back leg is strong and powerful if it's lifted. So imagine there's a wall, an invisible wall right behind you, and you're stomping your foot onto that wall. Yes, good. Hips are open. Heart is open. Shoulders are open. And then where is your breath? Are you holding it or is it flowing? Can you feel it moving through you? Awesome work, friends. Take about two more rounds wherever you're working. And then we'll land back in warrior two. So from wherever you're at, back to a warrior two stance. Good job. All right. Now straighten your front leg, parallel your feet. Take your arms to the sky, inhale. And all the way down as you exhale, wide-legged forward fold and anywhere you want to go for about five rounds. So you can explore with movement. You can just hang out and breathe. Slow, deep breath. Open mouth, sighs at any time. Very nice. You guys look so good. Good awareness. Take about two more rounds. Uh... Next inhalation. Halfway lift. Fingertips on the ground. Walk your hands to the top of your mat. Back to a low lunge position. And then from low lunge, plank pose. Step your front foot back. Okay, from your plank pose, side plank, Vashistasana, right hand is your foundation. So roll onto the baby toe edge of your right foot, left arm up, 
If you would like, right knee can absolutely come down. So if your bottom knee is down, awesome. If it is not on the ground, focus on lifting your hips really high. Nice, Kirsten. So good, everyone. Maybe your left arm reaches forward, lengthen your left side. Maybe your left leg even floats up. Lift your hips even higher. One more huge breath. Beautiful. And plank posture. So come to a regular plank or a modified plank. Up to you. Inhale, push the ground away. Exhale all the way to your belly. Uh, Spider-Man Cobra again. So hands out wide. Lift your heart, but it's probably going to not be quite as high this time. So we're doing something different. Bend your right knee, press into your right fingertips, roll up and over onto your left outer hip. So reach your right toes towards the ground behind you, try to touch the ground behind you. You can let your left shoulder dip down and feel the stretch there. If possible, you're staying on your fingertips one more round. So strong fingers and then back through center. Switch sides, right leg extends, left knee bends, and then up and over onto your outer right hip. Left toes reach towards the ground. It's like you have a scorpion tail in your left leg. Yes, good work. Breathe into it. Feel the stretch in the front of your right shoulder. And then eventually back to center. You can let it go. If there's another heart opener you wanna give yourself, feel free. And then eventually just child's pose it out for a couple breaths. Feel your body, feel yourself as an energetic being. All that energy moving through you. Take one more grounding breath here. And then downward facing dog pose. All right. From your down dog. Inhale your right leg to the sky. Peel your right hip open. So bend your right knee. Reach your knee out and up. So try to keep your hands rooted, both hands, your shoulders square and strong. Just feel the mobility in your right hip to create this. You can stay here if you want. This will be a great stretch. Stay here, breathe here. Otherwise, one more inhale here. Exhale, right knee, left elbow, or as close as you can come. Push the ground away. Yes. Inhale, three-legged dog. Open your hip if you want to. Scorpion tail your right leg. Exhale, right knee, right armpit. Aim as high as you can on your right arm. Yes. Inhale, back up. Awesome, Samantha. Exhale, everybody now. Knee to your nose. Scoop out your belly. Step forward softly. Come into... A warrior three with your fingertips on the ground or your hands on a block or blocks. So walk your hands forward, float your back leg up. So this is not standing splits. I want you to feel your spine like you're in a halfway lift position and then feel your back leg parallel to the earth. Feel your inner thighs facing one another, hugging in towards one another. Bring your right hand to the crease in your right hip. So see if you can stick your fingers in that crease and literally start to push your right hip back towards the back of the room. Automatically, you should feel your upper body start to twist towards the right side. Once you feel that twist, keep working it with your core strength. Squeeze your inner thighs and eventually see if you can reach your right arm to the sky. Revolved half moon. Yes, you guys are amazing. Back leg stays strong and powerful. I know this is so hard. Be with the challenge of the pose. Breathe into it. Open through the right side of your heart. Breathe down into your belly. Last big deep breath. Amazing poses. Beautiful. Let it go forward. Fold top of your space. You can give your legs a little shaky shake or pedal out your heels. Ah, walk your feet out to the width of your yoga mat. 
heels in, toes out, low squat malasana. So if you can, keep your heels down. If you need to lift your heels, that's fine. If your heels are down, try to press not only into the inner edges of your feet, but outer edges as well. And then see if you can pick up your toes and spread them. Press your elbows into your inner knees or inner thighs and lengthen your spinal column. Breathe all the way down into your pelvis. Nice job. Last couple breaths. Bring your fingertips to the ground and lift your hips to the sky. Heel toe your feet in so their hips width distance or big toes touch, however you prefer them. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bow and fold. Root through your feet all the way up. Rise, arms to the sky, inhale. And hands to heart, exhale. Let's flow through a vinyasa before we do all that on the other side. So inhale, reach up, high mountain. Baby back bend as you exhale, cactus your arms, bottom tips of shoulder blades, squeeze. Inhale, re-extend, realign. And stick out your butt, reach your heart forward, big bend in the knees is helpful as you dive down and fold. Lift halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, inhale. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back. Take your vinyasa however you want to. So add push-ups, take it on your knees, substitute cat cows, whatever you'd like. See you back in down dog and just walk it up. Back in your down dog, notice, feel. How does right side feel versus left side? Right leg versus left leg. Big deep breath, one more inhale. Exhale, gaze forward, step or float, top of your yoga mat, forward fold. Lift halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, so much length, breathe in. And release, Uttanasana. All the way up, rise, reach up, high mountain, breathe in. And exhale, hands to heart. All right, inhale, arms to the sky. And this time we'll find our balance on our left foot. So left foot is your foundation. Lift your right knee, standing stack. Hug in with your inner thighs and flex through your right toes. Focus your gaze. Good job. Slow, deep breaths. One more inhale. Exhale, moving through warrior three, but pausing for about two or three rounds. So slowly start to hinge at your hips. Reach your right leg back and arms are your choice. So most intense will be straight forward, full warrior three. The less intense, out to the sides, back, heart center, blocks. So strong through your back leg, long through your spine. Last round, you got this. Crescent lunge, see if you can land softly, good. And then if you need to make any adjustments, make those adjustments and take your time to settle, to feel your strong foundation, your strong legs, strong feet, strong toes. And then from your strong foundation, your unique expression. So you don't need to do anything crazy. You don't need to do anything special. But whatever you're doing is on purpose. If you're smiling, it's on purpose. If you're making an angry face, it's on purpose. Take one more inhale, reach up. Exhale, twist, right arm forward, left arm back. Bend your back knee a little or a lot. So if you want more intensity, bend it a lot so it's hovering above the ground. Imagine you're trying to drag your back thigh forward and your front hip back. Squeeze your inner thighs. Take one more round here. And then bring your left forearm across your low back. Square your shoulders towards the front of the room. Reach your right arm up and see if you can lengthen. So start to create a back bend. Reach your right fingertips towards the back wall. Make this come from mid and upper back. So you're not leaning back, collapsing into your low spine, but you're curling open. One more inhale. And exhale, right hand down, left hand down. Walk your hands over to the right long edge of your mat. Parallel your feet, straighten your legs. Inhale, lift halfway, 
and bring your hands to your hips. So you have to engage your core and you have to find your strong legs and then rise all the way up. Once you're standing, pivot your heels in, toes out again, come into that wide-legged squat. And this time we're gonna bring our arms out to both sides. So knees over ankles, and then imagine that you're lifting your heart, opening your heart, letting it look at the sky, breathe in here. As you exhale, curl in, bring the backs of your hands together out in front of you, round. Inhale, open, let your heart look up. Squeeze your shoulder blades together on your back body and exhale, curl in. See if you can stay low in your legs. So your pelvis is moving a little bit, but otherwise your legs are staying the same. Feel the mobility through your spine. Breathe. If your legs are on fire, send your breath there. Take one or two more rounds just like this. Working your spinal flexion and extension. Good. Nice work. All right, everybody, hands to your thighs. And take a moment. Just kind of sway, rock it out. If you feel like you want to take a couple twists like before, go for it. I'm just going to say, actually, I forgot we have to do warrior two stuff. Okay. So everybody, after about two more rounds, just feeling it out. Straighten your legs. And then warrior two stance. So pivot your back heel, pivot your front toes, bend your front knee, adjust your arms. Good job. So any adjustments you need to make, if you want to widen your stance, if you want to step your feet more onto a balance beam, whatever you got to do, feel your front knee track open towards pinky toe rather than falling in towards big toe. Reverse warrior, reach up, reach back. Yes, beautiful. Lengthen through your left side, puff up through your left rib cage. Keep tracking your front knee towards your pinky toe. Any variation you want to take with your right arm. Yes, send your breath down into your legs. You got this. One more inhale. Exhale, move through warrior two into your side angle. So reach forward and then tip it over. If side angle is where you want to stay, decide how would you like to work it. If you're staying only for a couple breaths, maybe you're more in preparation for transition. So balancing half moon is where we're headed if you want to go there. You can use a block under your left hand, reach forward, float your back foot off the ground. Remember, back leg strong. So if your back leg feels like it weighs a million pounds, probably because you're not engaging any of the muscles in it. So see if you can engage all the little teeny tiny muscles in your back leg, even in your foot. Nice, Tracy. You guys look so good. Last couple of breaths. Good, Callie. Open the front of your hips, front of your heart. Ah, all right, back to warrior two, soft landing if possible. Back to warrior two. Good job. Now straighten front leg, parallel your feet and take your arms to the sky. Inhale, all the way down, wide-legged forward fold. Ah. Anywhere you wanna take this. So make it more restful if that's what your body needs or make it more Playful, that's what your body wants. Just make sure breath, wherever you go, breath is right there with you. Notice if your mind wandered off somewhere else and bring it back. Feel your body, feel your breath. One last inhale. If you want to, open your mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Halfway lift, fingertips on the ground. Walk your hands to the top of your space. So back into a low lunge. From low lunge, plank pose. Step your front foot back. From your plank pose, Vashistasana side plank, left hand is your base. Yeah, left forearm can come down, left knee can come down. If your bottom knee is not on the ground, lift your hips really high. So imagine you're trying to create an archer rainbow with your body. 
Right arm might reach forward. Thanks, Chris. Right leg might float up if your right leg floats up. See if you can lift your hips even higher. One last huge full body breath, your fullest expression. Amazing, friends. Plank or modified. Inhale at the top of your push up. Exhale all the way to your belly. All right, listen. Low cobra, baby cobra. So lift just with your back strength, not with your arm strength. Good, Kirsten. See if you can lift your hands, reach them back. Lift your feet, reach them back. Locust pose. Try not to widen your legs. Instead, hug in with your inner thighs. And imagine you're trying to rotate your inner thighs in and up towards the sky. See if you can lift your heart higher by engaging through your mid back. So it helps me if I bend my elbows and try to squeeze my elbows towards each other behind me. If you want, you could also interlace your fingers. So you do you. Take about two more rounds. Breathe all the way down into your belly. Back of your neck is long. Lift, lift, lift. And release. Good job. Rest your head to either side for a moment. And if you want, just kind of rock your hips or windshield wiper your shins. When you're ready, child's pose it out. Just feel the ground underneath you. Slow, spacious, ujjayi breath. Downward facing dog. All right, inhale your left leg back and up. Peel your left hip open, bend your knee, reach it out and up. So feel your outer left butt cheek squeeze. That's your medial glute. You can stay here if you want. This is a great stretch. Otherwise, a little more strength. One more inhale here and exhale, left knee, right elbow, or as close as you can come. Push the ground away. Inhale back up, scorpion tail your leg if you want. Exhale, left to left. Aim as high as you can. Aim for your armpit. Yes. Inhale, back up. Now, everybody, knee to your nose. Scoop out your belly. Step forward softly. So think of that warrior three variation with fingertips on the ground or hands on a block or block. So walk your hands forward. Float your back foot up. It's not standing splits. Think more warrior three. So spine is in a halfway lift. It's parallel to the ground. Back leg is parallel to the ground. Hips are square, inner thighs face each other. So most of us probably could lower our right hip even more to get our hips even more square. Bring your left hand to your left hip crease. Put your fingers in that little crease and literally start to push your left hip back. Automatically, you should feel your body turn to the left. Keep working that twist with your core strength. Eventually, left arm to the sky, maybe. Nice job. Good. Awesome, Chris. Back leg is strong. Back foot is pressing into an invisible wall. Squeeze your inner thighs. Open through the left side of your heart. Last round. Twist, 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 and let it go forward, full top of your yoga mat. Anything that needs a little shake out, shake it out. <sighs> Feet come out wide to the width of your mat, toes wider than heels. Low squat malasana once again. So you can stay here with elbows at inner thighs or option to add a twist, reach your right arm out to the right. It's inside your leg. So you're pressing your arm into your leg, your leg, leg into your arm. Use that as leverage. And then left arm to the sky, gaze up at your left fingertips. If the bind is in your practice, if it's available to you, feel free. Take about two more rounds here. 
If possible, heels are on the ground. Try not to roll onto the inner edges of your feet. And then end of your next exhale, just switch to the other side. So left arm out, press arm into leg, leg into arm. And then open up, gaze up at right hand, bind if you want. Last couple rounds on this side. Breathe down into your pelvic bowl. Nice work, friends. When you feel pretty much even on both sides, you can let it go. Forward fold as you are ready. Lift your hips. Adjust your feet. So heel toe your feet together or hips with distance. Toes now face directly forward. Ujjayi breath. Lift halfway. Inhale. Exhale. Fold and bow. Root through your feet. Take it all the way up. Big full body stretch. Arms reach. Inhale. That's when the exhale. Hands to your heart. All right. Flow with your breath. Inhale. High mountain. Baby back bend with your exhalation. Cactus your arms. Bottom tips of shoulder blades. Squeeze. Curl open. Realign. Re-extend. Inhale. And slow dive, stick your butt out, reach your heart forward all the way down and fold. Lift halfway, inhale. And exhale, plant your hands, feet back. Move through your vinyasa however you would like. So we'll meet back eventually, no rush, in down dog. You want to grab a child's pose before you get to down dog? Go for it. All right. Downward facing dog, my friend. Inhale your right leg to the sky. And only if you want to, option to flip your dog from here. Otherwise, option to hang out for a couple more breaths and your three-legged dog, however you want to work it. So you might keep your hips square. You might open your hip. You might circle out your knee. If you're in the back bend, give it a couple rounds. Breathe into your front body. And then everybody, three-legged down dog, right leg extended. It's Cali. Inhale, lift your right leg high. Pigeon pose as you exhale. Right shin comes forward and gently bring your body down. Right knee towards the outer right edge of your mat. So nice and wide with your right knee. And just like in crescent lunge, we're not just sinking into our joints. We're plugging the femur bones into the socket. So pull your right hip back. Keep pulling your right hip back as you take your heart forward. So especially if you're somebody that can just kind of plop into pigeon, try not to do that. Big, deep breaths. Yeah, much better, Sam. Samantha. <laughs> Good, everybody. A little bit of activation through your front toes. So see if you can spread your front toes. And what that does, it's not completely absolutely necessary, but it does keep you from pulling on your tendons and ligaments. So every once in a while, when we're kind of pushing an edge in yoga, that's when we move something a little bit funky and we're like, oh, that hurt. Oh, that wasn't right. If you keep that activation through your toes, it essentially keeps all those little tendons and ligaments inside more rigid. So they're not being pulled if you push a little too hard for a second. So you're protecting the things you want to protect as you stretch your muscles. Use your big deep breaths about four or five more rounds. <sighs>
Ah, last big exhalation. Open mouth sigh. Start to lift back up. And then we're coming into a seat, but don't go too fast because we're not going too far. So slowly, nice and easy, sit over onto your right butt cheek, outer right butt cheek. You can let your hips open now, back knee can bend. And then once you're here, just kind of scoot your right shin so that it's parallel. It's exactly parallel with the front edge of your mat. And then scoot your back knee towards your right heel. And then from here, bring your hands behind you and slowly start to lower your upper body back. Try not to let your inner left knee lift up at all. And to protect your ankle and your knee as much as possible, keep your toes active so you can adjust through your back foot if you need to. And if this, for whatever reason, is really, really, really uncomfortable for you, you can lay down and instead take windshield wipers with your legs, knees over to the right, even outer right foot on the outside of your left knee. If you're in this position, some of you might be able to lay all the way down on your back. If you're laying all the way down on your back, See if you can get your left back ribs a little closer to the ground. So working the inner rotation of our left femur bone in the hip socket. Breathe into it about three to five more. And rather than creating a back bend or a heart opener, we're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to neutralize our spine. So Knit your front ribs together and draw your belly down. Last couple of rounds. Ah. Slowly begin to find your way back upright. And then bring your legs forward so your feet are at the width of your yoga mat, nice and wide. Hands behind you, windshield wiper it out. And then if you want, you can keep your hands behind you. If you want a little more of a challenge, you can lift your hands up and see if you can keep this movement going. So a little bit of core engagement as you take your knees side to side. Good job, friends. And then next few rounds, we're gonna meet back in down dog. So you can get there your own way or you can take my invitation so invitation to find boat pose for about three breaths balance on your sit bones hugging with your inner thighs if you want more you can straighten your legs or reach your arms back lift your heart soften your face from boat whenever you're ready so if you want to hold longer feel free whenever you're ready cross your ankles Plant your hands. You can either step back or if a jump back is in your practice, you can jump back to chaturanga with bent elbows. Move through your vinyasa or skip it. Downward facing dog is your destination. Walk it up. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Choose to stay in your three-legged dog a little bit longer. Explore here or option to flip your dog. Left foot comes down. Heart wants to look at that front wall. See if you can let it nice, Tara. See if you can feel the stretch through your abdominal wall. Breathe all the way down into your belly. Beautiful, amazing. Those of you in the back bend, one more breath. And then come back, everyone, three-legged down dog. Inhale, left leg high, lengthen. Pigeon pose, left shin forward. Body comes down ever so gently. And take your time to set yourself up. So what I'm talking about is the structure, the stability of the pose. So many times in yoga, people think it's just about being flexible and going as deep as you can. I very much disagree. That's how people get hurt in yoga. So stabilizing as you stretch is the most sustainable way to work a pose. Pull your left hip back, back, back as your heart goes forward and down. Breathe into the sensation you feel. 
The goal is not to feel less sensation. The goal is not to feel more sensation. The goal is just to be with whatever sensation is there. Just allowing it. Just witnessing it. Softening around it. Breath by breath. Ah, and anytime you need any time, your body's like, oh, this is uncomfortable. This is a lot. Give that energy of discomfort. Give it somewhere to go. Send it out your mouth. Overwhelming. Send it out your mouth. It's frustration. Send it out your mouth. <laughs> anytime, even in life, it's so valuable. Big open mouth sigh. Anytime there's too much. Take about three more right here. All right, last deep breath. And then start to work your way upright. Coming gently into our seat, but not going too far. So just sit over onto your outer left glute. Let your hips open. Once you're there, adjust so that your left shin is parallel with the front edge of your mat. Scoot your right knee up towards your left heel. Bring your hands behind you. So it is tempting to go to the left. And if that's better if that feels better that's okay but try to go straight back as much as you're able pull your right rib cage down so your right rib cage is probably the one that wants to lift up pull it back and down then start to lean back maybe some of you can lay all the way down on your back and if so work on pressing the back of your right rib cage down only go as far as you can without letting the inside of your right knee lift and if it starts to pull on your knee that's where you stop Activation through your right toes. And if this is way too much, not working for you, just lay down, take windshield wiper variation in step. Inner rotation of our right femur bone in our hip socket. For whatever reason, a lot of us start to lose this mobility as we age. So just be with it, breathe into it, whatever's there, let it be there. No judgment, just curiosity, just observation. Relax your forehead, jaw, cheeks. And then slowly, bottom of your next exhale, start to lift back upright. Swing your legs around. Same thing we did before. Windshield wiper side to side with hands behind you. Or if you want to try, Without your hands on the ground behind you, you can do whatever you want that helps with your arms. See if you can find your core as you take your knees side to side. And then eventually, you guys, we're going to come all the way down onto our back. So if you want to take some of these on your back as well, feel free to continue them as you go down onto your back. And if you are windshield wipering your knees on your back, eventually let it go and come to constructive rest pose. So feet wide, knees together, just like we began. Maybe one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly, and just feel, notice, has anything shifted inside of you since the very beginning of our practice? Physically, energetically, emotionally, mentally. Does anything feel a little bit different? Maybe, maybe not. No judgment. Just curiosity. You feel really good here. You just want to stay here. Melt here. Go for it. 
Otherwise, hug your knees in towards your belly, gentle rock from side to side. Let your knees fall, both of your knees over to the right side. Left arm extends out to the left for a supine twist. And if you need to make any adjustments or you want to take your own variation of a twist, fine with me. Breathe down into your belly a little bit longer. Keep that big, spacious breath going. Give your weight to the ground. Let it hold all of you. And then just in your next couple of rounds, find your way to the other side. When you feel pretty even on both sides, so take your time, but eventually come back to center and find happy baby pose. From your happy baby pose, if there are any last movements, stretches, anything else your body is still calling for to complete your practice, give yourself a moment to move through those. Maybe one last vinyasa, or one last, maybe one last vinyasa, <laughs> one last inversion. Maybe just one last big squeeze of your knees towards your belly. Maybe one last full body stretch. Or maybe you just want to roll out your ankles and wrists a little bit. Perhaps you want to give yourself a little massage, temple massage, forehead massage, jaw massage. And then just in your own time, begin your transition into your final relaxation. So that can be the traditional corpse pose or that can be any other position that you wanna take your Shavasana in. So anything that will just allow you to connect with yourself, to let go of efforting. So this is a poem by Farah Tucker. And I liked it. It's just, it's just really about community and connection and even just the power of showing up for a yoga class, although we don't talk to each other the whole time. Slowly, every time you guys show up, we're building community, we're building connection. You're getting to know each other, you're calling each other by name. That's powerful, showing up for yourself in community, I think is so valuable in this life. So this is called, I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on by a thread. And so are you and him and her and them. But what if we tied our threads together? What if we stitched something strong enough to withstand the weight of it all, of us all? Big enough to make sure there's always a place to hold on to, even when parts of the fabric are threadbare. 
I am hanging on by a thread, but I am trying to learn how to weave. So sometimes we are all hanging on by a thread, but I hope that you feel the support and the connections and community around you, even just the earth, the way it holds you, supports you always. We belong here. But even when you're hanging on by a thread, know that that is enough. Know that you are supported by forces you can't even see. These last few moments, just give yourself the time and space to feel whatever's inside of you without trying to push it away. Just acknowledging, witnessing, allowing every part, pleasant, unpleasant, good, bad, comfortable, uncomfortable, let it all be there. Let it all have space to flow. And you just feel, you just witness. Shavasana.
a deep breath in. Let it go. Ah. Slowly bring gentle movement into your fingers, your toes. Start to come back into your physical body. As you're ready, no rush. Just eventually find your way onto either side, fetal position. Give yourself a moment resting on your side body, curling into yourself in a nurturing way. Imagine these last couple moments in fetal position just as a time for integration, letting your practice soak in all the energy, all the efforts from it. Visualize it even in some way, use your imagination. And then using your arms, start to guide yourself up into seated meditation to close our practice. Sit up nice and tall, gather your hands to your heart, close your eyes or soften your gaze and just bow your head to your own heart. Thank yourself, acknowledge yourself. For taking time out of your day to be here, even if it was difficult, even if you have allergies right now and it's challenging. So thank yourself for making the effort, for showing up, rolling out your mat, doing your practice. I thank you guys all so, so much for being here, for letting me guide you. Namaste. my friends thank you if you have any questions feel free to ask and have a wonderful day it's only gonna be like 101 today i don't know what it is. i don't know what it's supposed to be <laughs>